Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Bushman is in the building once again. Welcome to the Rebound MBL show, the Headspace series, episode two. Um, first conversation we had was a lot of fun, had a lot of interesting things. And this time I have the pleasure to introduce one of my good, good, good friends. Like every time I go to North, I have to go see this guy. Love him so much. One of the best shooters in Division One. You have to know who he is, Mr. David Walsh. Talk to me. Talk Man, to me. Don't don't gas me up that much, bro. <laughs> don't gas me up that much. But so love from me. So love from me. All so love how, from me. It's all good, man. How's things, man? Things are good, man. Busy. Obviously, just uh, just made it official again for my fourth season with Bradford. So, you know, we're 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 moving. Um, you know, a, a lot of life things are happening too. So mm. there was a there was a big build up from from last season to this season. A lot of changes in my life personally. So yeah, the 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 house that I'm in at the moment recently just moved to Bradford. So let's go playing for Bradford made that uh, made that decision a lot easier. So a hundred percent. How does it feel to be around them old guys for another year? You, you know what? They've given me nothing but love. I can't get rid of Richard now that I've moved up here. You know, he's <laughs> he's knocking on the door every day. Um, it's it's always a good feeling to to have a a good connection with with the guys that you play with outside of the game too. So, yeah. you know, you you go onto the floor, you're battling every day, but you, you you walk away from that and you're able to go out with the guys go you know just go around see each other it's it's a good feeling man it's a good feeling especially being up here mm. and and closer to them as well you know you you got that you got that support around you as well so it's 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 great man that's awesome that's awesome man and you know i saw you in manchester for you know playoff finals and everything like you know, you telling me your story and everything is just awesome. So, you know, I'm wishing you nothing but the best for the season. I'm going to be keeping an eye on your numbers. You know, I expect, I expect nothing Thank but you, the bro. best. You know, number one three point shooter in the country. I expect nothing else. I, I, I'll try. My my numbers haven't reflected that, but I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. I'll try not to jack up nine threes at least. <laughs> <laughs> so, volume shooter. Volume shooter. Volume shooter. <laughs> So, like, talk to me. Talk to me a little bit more. Like, where are you at now? Now you know you've just you just you just signed. It's just been announced. What are your expectations for this year? Like, what's what what would make a successful season for David Walsh? A successful season for me would be, you know, I've I've come from the Myasco program when I was younger. Um, I've I've saw that development through through my entire basketball career. We ended up winning a lot when I was there too so I'm I'm not shy of winning but uh, looking at some of these teams this season it's going to be a yeah, yeah. it's going to be a tough season you know with with Hemel picking up a lot of guys yeah um they raided as the well. crap you, out of Thames Valley you, you had Ish, you had Ishmael on last time you know yeah. he was talking about the pickups that he's had too I mean don't worry it's it's, it's going to be a it's going to be a challenging season. It's going to be an interesting season. Yes. Yeah. You know, especially from Bradford's perspective, we've got some some potential moves that that might shock some people. Um, so, you know, we've we've we picked up a few guys, but you know, Brad, Bradford again. You've already seen the first three signings. We've got yeah. our veterans still uh, still going strong. You know, high numbers. So. For this season, we're we're hoping to at least not finish at the bottom at the bottom of of the playoff yeah. standing because as you've seen, we can compete with some of the top teams and have a really close game, and yet we can play against some teams who are towards the bottom end of the league and really yeah. struggle. Um, so we're just hoping for a bit of consistency this season. Um, mm. You know, we've we've had a lot of injury woes over COVID. Uh, you know, losing losing Albert to a knee injury, losing yeah. Andreas to a knee injury, yeah. both of those guys being out for two seasons, it's a it's a heavy loss yeah. for us. So, um, you know, Zach, Zach Gachette's not returning with us this season either. Mm. So there's there's another another big, big score big scoring hole. Yeah. Um, 
but you know we're we're looking to obviously get through to the playoffs and and give some of these these tougher teams like Worthing and Hemel, especially this season, we're, yeah. we're going to try and at least give them a bit of competition, so so they don't don't roll don't roll yeah. every team in the league. Yeah, you know we don't want a repeat of of Seoul and losing twice again or or one game all season. So. <laughs> I you think know. they what they lost like one game in like three years, but yeah, it was dude, it was it was, it was stupid. <laughs> like it was that, so dumb. That for Division One and the and the caliber of guys that are in Division One as well. You know, some some of these teams were were fighting and battling. Yeah. And so then just. Psh, yeah. There's <laughs> just no explanation for that at yeah. all. Yeah. So. Can I want to touch on something as well? Since we're talking about basketball right now. Obviously, I've been in Division 1 for about three years now. But every time I've seen you, bar one game, it's been decided by nothing more than one point. Why is that always the case when you play against each other, my guy? I don't like it. It's a freaking fight Dude, you think every I time. Do? <laughs> you think I like it? <laughs> when it comes down to you know one point games, it's like yeah, yeah, Dave, Dave, go, 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 score a free hand. Dude, I'm gassed. You played me 35 minutes. I ain't as young as I used to be, and you're going, yeah, Dave, I've subbed you out for two minutes, but now they've got it close again. I need you to, I need you to make a. I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I have to. I, I'll make, I'll make a shot if I need to, but. Again, it, it doesn't always pay off. So when we played Loughborough last season, I had the biggest flop. I had a flop of the season last season. <laughs> you know, we we were up and the ball came back to me. Jermaine grabbed the offensive rebound. All we had to do was hold it. I think there were like um, eight seconds left on the clock. Jermaine mm. grabbed the rebound, passed it to me. And me being a shooter wide open for free, I was like, yeah, my eyes lit up, shot it, turned around, looked at the clock and was like, uh, ball went out of bounds, uh, they come down, um, coach tells us to foul, we foul, send them to the line, they make one free throw, miss the second free throw, get the offensive rebound, bank uh, it home, they win by one. No. Uh, they, no. They, they, no, they took it to overtime. Took they took it to, over- it to uh, OT and beat us in OT. So, you know, it's... Like I say, we're one of those teams. We can compete against good teams. We compete. We compete against all teams. Yeah. So some games just don't go our way. Like when we played Red in away last season, we travelled up with six guys. Yeah. Ricky was was ill too, so he didn't really step on the floor. So we played yeah. a full game with with six guys. Um, not our strongest five, and got you know we got absolutely blown out. We got embarrassed yeah. on their home court, and yeah. then we come up against teams like Loughborough who can go up against the best oh, of teams yeah. and we we just we just end up dropping games so we're yeah. like I say like I said from early we're, we're looking for a bit of consistency through through this season to to hopefully get a good standing but if a game's not close it ain't competitive so exactly exactly and we I mean we already know that you know Fetsky and Salts are gonna fight everybody. I mean, they fought me all year, so like that's all they're gonna do. They're just gonna make it just be really aggressive and you know put you guys in a situation to be successful. You know, that's they it. do all the dirty work, so you and Jermaine don't. So you and Jermaine don't have to. You know, that's, that's literally it. how it always is. That's it. You know, but yeah, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on you guys, man. You guys are probably like every time I see you guys circled on the calendar, I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. I like to fight. You know. So, <laughs> Like I'm, I'm gonna keep an eye on you guys, see how you guys do this year, and you know you were you've always got a fan in me, so you gotta Absolutely, worry about them things. I appreciate it. So you know you mentioned earlier a lot of family stuff has happened. You know, like I mentioned earlier as well, I saw you in um saw you in Manchester. I was hosting the playoff finals, and it was absolutely awesome seeing your face again. You know, oh, my yeah, face man. lit up when I see when I saw you. But then, you know, you was telling me about you know the family things, the things you was dealing with, and everything. So, um. You know, the floor is yours. You know, anything you want to say, like anything that's happened, like just the floor is yours. Yeah, you just know. just a, a lot of change in a in a short period of time for me personally. Um, so, purchased my first house in March with with my partner. 
so you know there's there's one of the biggest life changes that you can go through as as a young adult at least or at any age you know Mm. buying your first property and and getting onto the property ladder that's it's a massive achievement um not long after moving up here uh I'd, i'd say no less than a month after moving up here got another job up here so you know it wasn't just a change of address change of location it was mm. change of change of um of work and especially being a, a new homeowner as well that that little period where you know you're interviewing you're you're doing this that and the other to to try and find something closer yeah um it's uh it was a str- it was a very stressful time stress stressful period um adjusting to obviously those mortgage payments going out as opposed yep. to rental payments yeah um all the bills that come with it it's not the first time me and my partner have moved either so we have rented in the past mm. but when it's your first property and, and you're starting finding different things that need doing especially in the house that is now yours so you can't yeah. just you know you can't just go and ring up your landlord knock on the door and say look this needs doing and they fix it it's like no this needs doing and it's gonna cost a you know, cost a lot a of money amount, to repair yeah. it too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first big change for for me in my life. Um, you know, me me and my partner are, are comfortably setting in, settling mm. in. Like I say, we've been been here since March. Um, yeah, my my family uh, also moved as well. So my my family home was was sold up. Mm. My, my family moved over to uh, the Yorkshire Dales. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah. You know, uh, just just a lot of, of family change as well. Um, a bit of a rough patch. Uh, a lot of a lot of problems between my sister and and her ex partner as well. So mm. uh, there's there's been a lot of a lot of issues around that, which has obviously also caused some stress. Mm. um not just for myself but my family unit as well and and yeah i'm very much a family man so even even if it ain't blood i'm i'm family orientated so yeah. you know yourself richard ricky my, my teammates uh amy my partner just i'm, I'm family orientated so um a lot of my unit my family unit with my actual blood family unit has, has taken quite a they've also been going through a lot in their situation. So mm. hearing those stresses from, from my old man who I look up to, um, you know, that's also been, been tough. So trying to be there for, it, sa- it sounds different when you're a younger, a younger person, mm. um, being there for your old man, as opposed to your old man being there for you. It's, it's, it's definitely, uh, a different a, dynamic a, a different dynamic mate yeah one that i'm not used to but um mm. yeah a lot of a lot of change some some for the better some not so much but mm. you know that's 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 life at the end of the day isn't it so yeah. being able to to entrust that onto other people and and having that support around you as well so especially in this podcast as well headspace yes sir it's, it's a, a support network is is something that you you know you can't underestimate because mm. a lot of changes and a lot of things that you probably haven't come across and and need need help with then mm. having a, a good support network not just family or or friends but anyone and everyone in a community that you've built up mm. it doesn't go amiss you know yeah so how's how's all of that everything that's happened around you everything you know um Obviously, you and your partners, you know, trying to you're trying to move and everything. But how has that, you think, affected you as an athlete? Because you know, as athletes, we have this thing where we're judged by performance, but not really sort of judged on why we've performed a certain way. How has all of those things sort of crossed over into your game as an athlete? Uh. Well, obviously the the move itself. So when when moving house, um, I had to I had to miss a couple of games because you've got your move date. Yeah. You know, it's it's set in stone. You've got all your stuff that needs moving into your own property. You need to go and collect the keys. You need to go and make sure that everything is finalised. That you can go in and 
ultimately just be in your own house. Um, so there was a, a couple of games towards the, the back end of the season, which I just mm. wasn't able to make for, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, and then the long days moving, getting things sorted, getting things put up, built up. You know, mm. get get. It sounds stupid, but putting your bed up, getting wardrobes up, trying to find what you need. IKEA trips. That that, that takes the the physical strain, but also the the tiredness, the fatigue mm. that comes with it too. Um, and then being expected to perform at, at you know the the highest level in in Division One, playing against you know athletes, mm. proper athletes who are who are playing daily, lifting daily on the floor. Mm. Playing to a high level, and then being a 25-year-old dude who lives in, who now lives in Bradford, <laughs> you know, just just working a, a nine-to-five job yeah. daily, finishing that, going home, getting something to eat, and then going straight back out to train, doing things around the house. Mm. You know, it's it's uh, ultimately you're doing a 12-hour day. Yeah. So you've not just got the work stresses, you've got the home stress of, of getting things sorted, getting things in place, getting things mm. ready. Um, and then going, trying to perform and compete against guys who are trying to make you better as, as a sportsman mm. and as a person too. Mm. Person That's too. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tough, tough balance, especially when, you know, bas- basketball in in this in this country for upcoming UK players and UK mm. talent, it's it's rare that you'd ever find something that will give you a career. And for those yeah. who have, obviously, you know, it's it's a massive achievement, and mm. it's not one to be to be downplayed in in any shape of or form. Mm. But, you know, it's it's a it's a tough tough area to be in, especially. Especially, I mean, Bradford in particular, we, we, we train twice a week and yet we come out and, and give some teams some good runs. Yeah. You know, te- teams who are on the floor five, six, seven days a week mm. and we're out there two days a week. Yeah. Making the most of the time that we've got just to try and try and maintain the level that we play at. You know, quality that's not taking into yeah. account. Yeah, that's that's not taking into account the individual work that goes on behind the scenes too. Mm. Um, but as as a team practice, two two sessions a week is is realistically what what we do, and mm. and yet we're we're able to compete at, at this level consistently. So, mm. talk to me about your transition from like from mental space from my school basketball to playing for playing for Bradford now like what was that change like what was that transition like uh, that that transition was um was a tough one so obviously being in the my school program I was used to the the five days a week six seven days a week having access to a court daily having access to a gym you know be, being able to just message one of the coaches and be like is the court open i'm going shooting for two three hours going mm. eating and then going back to the court straight after for for a team session mm. um you know having having full access now i i didn't make the most of it when i was at my school and you know i'm, I'm kicking myself thinking I, I could have been so much more than what what i am mm. um if I was to to push myself, but again, as as you know, when I first started at my school, I had a I had a knee surgery. Yeah. So my first year at my school, I was redshirted. I couldn't play. Um, had the surgery towards the back end of that first season. Came back, played in Division Four. Mm. Um, just wanted to play, get back on the court, get my fitness up, get my levels up. Then we ended up going to Division Three in my third year winning everything in division three so we won we won the cup we won the trophy and we won the league itself as well yeah um and then i i was still there for a couple of years playing division two before i eventually made the transition to to play for bradford the year after Mm. um and again that the whole ethos of myasco is is that academy ethos so we're we're bringing academy guys in 
who are who training daily, putting their bodies through the work to to get to that next level, to mm. go study abroad, go and play abroad, um, and then you know on the flip side of that, when I was older and when I wasn't living on site and wasn't able to to commit to to those five days a week, um, making that adjustment of of working driving up to Preston because I was still based in Manchester at the time. So yeah. driving up to Preston, training, playing on a weekend, um, you know, that, that was, that was my first real adjustment after, after living at Myersco and then moving to Bradford from, from Manchester or coming to Bradford in my first season, yeah. that, that journey was easy. You know, it's still, you're balancing nine to five job. Yeah two hour training session yeah back at 11 the m62 is a nightmare anyway (laughs) so roll closure roll closure you know you get home half 11 12 o'clock back up Mm. at six to go to work the next day so yeah um the the whole adjustment stage from myasco to to now was was huge um mentally as well so when when you look back and you think about how much time i've dedicated to to the sport and working on mm. you know working on my craft of, of my three ball um I, even now even in some summer runs i've got guys who probably should never shoot a three ball in their life <laughs> going, dude you need to teach me how to shoot i'm like well you need to get in the gym and, and work on your shot you know i've not exactly i've not just learned this overnight it's something mm-hmm. that i've i've worked on for a long time so i've now yeah. played basketball for I think 13 years now. Yeah. I'm I'm only 25, I'm going on 26. So Yeah. Um it's not something that started overnight and when I when I turn around and say I used to shoot like a footballer. So I used to <laughs> you know that that overhead throw in. I used to shoot like, I used to shoot like that back in the day. Um so a lot, a lot of time dedicated to to this sport mm. especially. Like it sounds like you know Playing for Bradford's now becomes such a major part of your life. Mm. Um, you know, they seem to just have this family ethos about them. And it's almost like they've indoctrinated you to be part of their community. And it's nice to see, you know, when I had when I go up there and see you guys, there's such a closeness like around you guys. Um and do you feel like for your headspace that 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 the value of family the value of community you know there's a, there's always a saying it takes a village to raise a child you know 100% so do you feel like that level of community that you have with your with your teammates you know your Jermaines, your Salks, your Fetskis, do you feel like that's played a major role in you know easing your mental tensions when you had a lot of turbulence up there a hundred percent i mean when i so i the the reason for the move so you'll remember this was now coming on four years ago was the maybank tournament so this yeah. is when you know yeah. I've, I've seen you in the past we, we didn't really you know we didn't really know each other um we played against each other in maybank we were there mm-hmm. for for the weekend you know we were chatting we were getting on um, and that's where that's where we started. That's where our our brother relationship started from there. Mm. Um, and it was me playing for Maroons with with Kenny. Mm. Um, and I I you know I didn't know didn't know people. Mm. I just knew Kenny. I, there were some faces who were recognised there. Um, yeah. But ultimately, I just wanted to play for the weekend. I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's you know, let's. <laughs> Let's show people what I've got. Let's go yeah. home after the day and then come come back the day after and, and do it all again. So um, it was from there. We ended up playing uh, Sulks, Clayfell, Ricky, Andreas. Mm. Um, uh, Loic was there too for, for yeah. that team. Yeah. Um, th- there's a few more guys who were, who were on that team as well. Uh, Jermaine was there too. Um, mm. And we ended up playing them and... I think it was in the semis. Yeah. Yeah. It was either the quarters or the semis. Um, and I went off. 
I remember that I went, game. I went off. Um, I remember that game. I was, I was losing getting, my shit. I was getting fouled. I was going to the line. I was making crazy arm ones. I was shooting threes. <laughs> you know, pull, pulling up from just in front of half court, just just doing whatever I could to try and win. But obviously, the caliber of guys that they had on that team was yeah. It's a, it's a tough ask for one person to one person to do. So yeah. Um, it was from there where. I think Chris was Chris was in the crowd for a few games too. So Chris, my little coach, and after that, I think that's where the conversation started. Richard hit me up on Facebook, mentioned a few runs that were going on in Bradford. So I was like, "Yeah, sure. I'm, you know, I'm I'm pretty much a free agent. I'll I'll come down. I'll I'll come play, and and you know, I'll see see what happens from there." And a few yeah. few sessions in, it was. You know, with what, what do you think about playing for Bradford? Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, then yeah, let's let's get after it. And from there, obviously, the guys have been welcoming. Um, and it's such a, like you say, it's such a family orientated place. It's, mm. it's brilliant. Um, like yesterday, I was helping Stokes pop a bed for for his son so <laughs> you know it's it's not it's bigger than basketball right now it's mm. if if you scratch my back i i got you you don't even have to repay me you don't have to do nothing i'm mm. you know if you've got an issue then then i'm there and it's uh it's, it's been great it's been uh, it's been a really good place for me especially i like that man i like <laughs> that i like that a lot man like there's nothing better than being able to play with like to play basketball with family you know or just to be around right. family because, you know, it means a lot. You know, it becomes a situation where it's not just the basketball. It's like, I ain't seen this guy in time. Let me catch up. Like, when I go when I go up to Bradford and play you guys, it's like, I ain't seen I ain't seen you guys in a long time. Let exactly. me catch up with you guys after the game. Let me catch up with you guys before the game. Let's, you know, and then during the game, even though it's a battle, it's war, it's still love at the end of it. And it's just, it's exactly. just nice, you know what I mean? Um, but let's spin this differently now. You're a premier shooter on the individual one. That's how I see you. That's how a lot of the league sees you. You're a premier shooter, one of the best in the league, by percentage and by number. Um, do you feel that pressure of being a premier shooter? And if you do, what do you do to sort of eliminate that as an athlete? Do I feel it 100%? Um, especially last season where, you know, we lost Andreas, um, you know, we, we lost Albert and mm. as, as good as, you know, some of the guys who we play with on our team, I'm, when you look at the three point line, I'm like the, the main threat, mm. especially last season where we had guys missing. Um, you know, it was, it was very much, I've got pressure to make these shots because, a lot of these shots I'm not going to get again for the rest of the game because they, yeah. they they know that the only real three-point threat out there right now is is me. I'm not taking it away from the guys on my team who can shoot either, but yeah. the, the main three-point threat or the guy who's going to get up these threes is was me. Yeah. So teams were hard denying i had to work for every three mm-hmm. um you know i'm I'm not really the best guy of, of creating my own three-point shot but i had to make that adjustment to to also get to the line and, and yeah. just take the take the freeze that i was get that i was given yeah um you know I, I i had a lot of shots i got a lot of three balls up you know some games shooting 12 13 14 threes um Whereas others, I was only probably getting maybe two or three. Mm. So, <clears throat> you know, being being the guy who's known as as a prolific three point shooter, it's of, of course that's challenging. Um, how how do I personally prepare? I I, you know, I'm I'm smart enough at the game to realize that if if my shot isn't on, or if I can see an adjustment in the team that can be done, yeah. then I'll try and not i will happily give up my shot for a better one if there is one available Mm. um you know i've i made the adjustment this season or the last season gone especially um 
my my percentage from three wasn't wasn't great or it was to start with mm. but towards the back end of the season <clears throat> uh it started to drop quite a bit because i was having to shoot more mm. um and again it could you know it, it comes down to right this this shot ain't dropping this shot ain't dropping mm. i don't need to see one go through the rim but I've got to be more selective in the shots that I'm at, yeah. that I am taking because a lot of them are just getting forced. They're not in rhythm. They're not a good shot. Mm. <clears throat> I got to try and try and move the ball, get get my team involved, and get some scores mm. the other way. When it when it comes to me and I've got that space, or it, even if you know, a lot of the time it's last second shot because we've we've moved it, we moved it, we moved it. Three seconds left on the shot clock. It's it's oh shit. You know, there you go, shoot it. Yeah. So, um, making that adjustment was was something that I had to do last season in particular. Um, mentally preparing for it, just going into the gym knowing these guys are gonna defend you mm. from from the off. Mm. You know, like, no, what do you... no no shot is gonna be an easy one. Like, what do you do then, though? Do you, do you keep your mind blank? when it comes to games or do you have the already have the notion built in like this is going to be tough for me they're going to try and do everything to stop me because I'm the best at what I do um personally for me because because shooting is such a, a second nature mm. I'm, I'm so used to if I catch it in rhythm it's going up mm. and all of my team around me too they I the amount of times I've had Richard on my back going, shoot it. Mm. Like, nah, that's it's a bad shot. He's like, dude, shoot it. That's not mm. for you. That's not a bad shot. Mm. If it's a bad shot, we will tell you. But until you shoot a bad shot, it's not a bad shot. Mm. So, so mentally, I think pre- preparing for shooting, I, I don't really prepare in any way. If anything, I'm mentally turned down shots. Because mm. otherwise... Otherwise, that that volume would go up to about twenty threes a game. Because <laughs> you know, if I I can shoot from near enough anywhere in front of the halfway line, mm. not I wouldn't say it to a high consistency, but I can if if I've got time, I've got space, and you know, I I can make that shot. Yeah, I can make that shot. Um, so. Yeah, me- mentally, um, I just think every shot I'm shooting is is going in. That's, mm. it, it doesn't matter if you're close. It doesn't matter if you play great defense for 23 seconds. If if you give me an inch of space and I can get that shot off in front of you, you're going to have to be real close to make sure that that shot has zero chance of going in. Yeah. Otherwise, it can go in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So, that's that's my mindset going into going into games, understanding they're gonna play tough defense, but if you get a second, a split second to get a shot off and they mm. give you that, oh, someone's got their hands down on you, if if they're gonna do that to you, then you've gotta make them pay. You have mm. to punish them. And that's something that I sort of have lived by and replay in my mind anyway. So mm. Do you think the league could do more? to promote positive mental health? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, not not every game, not every situation that you're put in is, is a positive one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think, especially from the league's perspective, and I, I'm, I'm going to take it even further back than the league, but sport in general in the UK, mm. um, you know, you just everyone's a winner that mentality mm. that we're at the moment we're setting up everyone to fail mm. now ishmael last last time on the on the pod he was like well no if i ain't out there to win then why i'm you know why am i gonna be why am i gonna be out there there's no point yeah. in me being out there if i ain't trying to win mm. and that should be the mentality for everyone yeah but from such a young age nowadays it's instilled that oh, well, you tried your hardest, you know, you did really well, but this person was better than you. No, if you want, if you want to win, then you've got to fight for it. 
Mm. And I think for for grassroots, yeah, it's it's about getting kids involved, but it's also understanding that if you're not at a level that someone else is, mm. you're gonna have to work to either beat them or match them mm. to progress further than them. Yeah. Um and you know, especially from from a mental age and, and a mental capacity for a lot of people growing up, that's what they've been taught. Yeah, and you can't you can't teach competitiveness. Yeah, yeah. You know, if 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 you're not a competitor, then you know you're you're just there along for the ride. Mm. You know, um, if you ain't going out there to compete and and to win and make yourself feel like that you're number one at what you do. Mm. Now, I I'm not a trash talker. Yeah, I'm really not. I, I am. I'm too, <laughs> I'm too humble for that. But if but when I, I get disrespected as in a sense that someone's closing out with the hands down, they're yeah. going under a screen, I take that as I'm a preview wrong for doing that. That's a mm. massive mistake on your part and I'm going to make mm. you know about it. Mm. So, right. I, you know, I, I, I preach pra- practice, practice, mm. you know, practice, practice what you're good at, but practice it and, and fight for competing against people. So like mm. we said earlier, every game we have is a battle. Yeah. And because it's a battle, it makes it better. Yeah. It makes me better. It makes you better. Now, mm. if I wasn't to battle you down low or on the block, mm. then you, you know, you'd have forty on me. Yeah. You know, I'm not exactly <laughs> a tall, big guy. Yeah. But then on the flip side, if you weren't battling to try and close out and contest the free, then I'd have forty. Exactly. So. Exactly. You know, just just having a competitive nature. I don't think the league does enough to promote, to promote that, the, mm. the mental thought process of you're doing this to win. You're not doing this to compete. Mm. One more question. Um, I like that point, by the way. Um, I would, I would drop 40 on you, but um the last yeah, question. I I <laughs> hey, Ricky, Ricky, come guard Ricky, this. Yeah, dude. come. He's, he's, he's killing me alive, man. Come, come guard him. <laughs> oh, gosh. Last question, though. Um, Ishmael, in the last episode, said something really, really interesting. And I really want to hear your take on this. Uh, we spoke about um, athletes having issues mentally with regards to if they're having issues and problems as an athlete that if you called anyone in the psychology department for basketball england if an athlete called them up and was like look i'm having a really hard time yeah need help um is there anyone i can talk to ishmael you know believes that you know if you did try to make that call there will be no one over there to be able to help you you know there'll be no one there so my thing is my question to you is if basketball england ain't gonna do nothing to support athletes when they're having those trials and tribulations what can coaches people of influence teams do to try and get basketball england's attention to to you know give athletes a space to do that kind of thing. You know, this is, this is, I'm trying to do this. This is, you know, rebounds space. This is, I'm trying to give people opportunity to sort of let out steam because they don't have that, you know. But what do you think other teams, especially you playing for Bradford at the family, you know, environment that you have, what can teams do to get basketball England's attention and be like, look, people need help. You're not helping them out. What so- this this is something that I'd, I've you know only only my teammates my partner and and people who who are close to me know so I had a, a I had a real problem so my problem was was financial mm. um I had quite a bad gambling problem to, mm. to the point where I got myself in in a pretty pretty big hole um now having that family and and the support that I, that I had not just from my my blood family but from my teammates from you from especially my partner amy you know she Mm. she was there through thick and thin um and put that ownership on me and said look if you don't get yourself sorted then then we aren't gonna work 
Mm. I can't I can't bail you out of this. Now, especially with with that. Now I took ownership. I told everyone that look, if if you guys are gonna do it around me, mm-hmm. then I want you to know that I do have a problem with this. I'm openly telling you that I have a problem with this. Mm. Um, and if it's something that you are going to do, by all means, I'm not going to say don't don't talk about it. But mm. I, if if you are going to talk about it, let me know. Yeah. You know, just just give me that heads up and, and let me let me mentally prepare for whatever's going to be said. Mm. Um, or so that I can find something else to to occupy myself with. So I put my yeah. headphones on and I won't listen to the conversation. Yeah. Um. Now from from that, obviously I've per- purchased my first house. Yeah. Um. You know, there's there's things in place where I'm not able to do it again. Mm. Um. I had Amy there as my as my main support support through that. Um. And I think if especially because it was sports sports yeah. related. Um. If if I was to pick up the phone and, and ring B and say, look, I have a serious issue here. And I, you know, cause a lot of people, when they get into that sort of problem that they, they see one way out and that's, yeah, that's the end everything. Yeah. Now, if I was to do that, I've got a huge support network around me. You know, if I, if I, mm. if I did that, then I would have let them down. Mm. Um, and it's also knowing that, even though you're in a problem and you're probably not in not in the right space mentally keeping it to yourself isn't going to be the best answer yeah now you know the the main problem that i had especially because that that took a toll on my relationship with with my partner yeah it distracted me from all training sessions yeah it was a touchy subject with with people who were close to me, so my mm. teammates, um, and you know, it was something that I bottled up for a long time, kept kept secret. Mm. And I lost an awful lot of weight. I was, yeah. I was severely underweight. I looked stressed. I was wasn't sleeping. Mm. If I was to pick up the phone and say that to to the league, I I would never have that support that. Mm. you know that I've been able to get from everyone else around me yeah you know if I if I was to turn around to, and, and say that I don't think they'd be able to point me in the right direction mm. or they wouldn't be they'd be like oh well what what you know what do you want us to do about that yeah you know do you, yeah. Can, can you pay your membership fee this season well, <laughs> no I can't <laughs> you know um yeah so so that's that's a that's a personal spin on on, mm. on that whole that, the whole mental thought process of if I was to pick up the phone and ring BE, yeah, then I don't think that support would be there. But I have that mm. support around me from from everyone else who who I'm with. So mm. yeah, hopefully hopefully that you know if if anyone watching also has that same issue, there are things that you can do. And keeping it to yourself is is not one of them. Yeah. You know, even even as a as a man or you know, even as just anything, any any problem is not too not big enough to not rely on other people. You don't yeah. have to attempt it or or tackle it yourself. Like mm. being being able to own up and say, you know what, I have this problem, that's that's the first step. Yeah. That's the first step to of acknowledgement and putting a plan in place to to do it and, and to get out of it. Mm. And um just, you know, let letting people know that I I'm not comfortable with this situation either. Mm. So mm. yeah, man, it's it's a tough it's a tough one to say, tough one to tough one to sort of get out there, especially yeah. from from me, because it does hit 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 hits close to home. Mm. Um, and something that I've had to overcome. Obviously, I've had that support. Yeah, you know, I've had had Amy there through thick and thin, and mm. and we've ultimately come out the other end of this and bought our first house together. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a big, it's a big one. 
It's a big one. Yeah, man. Like, I appreciate <laughs> your honesty, honestly. Like, hearing you speak is just... Hearing you speak about all this stuff, obviously I knew it personally already, but, you know, hearing you talk about it and hearing, you know, hearing what you had to do to come out the other side, it's it's inspiring, you know. It's like people need to hear about this stuff. People need to know that, you know, doesn't matter what it is you're going through, you're not alone and there's always people that can help. The importance of family, the values of community, the importance of relationships, it's just, you know, you're sort of a living embodiment of all of that you know i just wanted to say that personally and i appreciate your honesty and you know thanks for jumping on the show with me today and i absolutely, really appreciate man. you know absolutely 100 percent. Hopefully, hopefully i get to see you this season and touch base with you and catch up with you and your people them and break sure bread will, you know? yeah sure will. ladies and gentlemen david walsh in the building he's signing out appreciate always love you, my guy tune love, in next bro. time See you next time in the next Headspace episode. This was meaty. I liked it. I really liked it. Tune into the next one. Bushman's out. Peace.